Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Stacy and Janelle with me. Hey y'all. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about Hanukkah. Okay. This will be the kickoff video for the Hanukkah season in the year 2024. And so in this video, we're going to be talking about the exact dates, but we're also going to be touching on how we are to celebrate it. We're going to be touching on why this uh, holiday is uh, important in the first place when it was initiated um, its relationship to end time prophecies and even some other information all right I got some help from chat GPT putting this information together um, basically told it what I wanted and so if you would Stacy we'll allow you to read it and we'll just check it and make sure it all lines up with the scripture and give a few comments on stuff you may have missed and Highlight some of the stuff that we learn. All right. And I think the viewing audience will learn something too. Even the people who have been keeping Hanukkah for a while and you know believe they're even good at it will want to watch the video all the way through because there will be some stuff that they will be able to add to their festival, add to their understanding based on what we learn in scriptural texts like the Apocrypha. And but people who will be the first time they're keeping Hanukkah, they should actually consider watching it twice, maybe even have a pencil out. Uh -huh. But either case, you guys go ahead and hit the like button. Um, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We'll be putting out more videos, Father willing, um, dealing with Hanukkah as we get closer. So you wanna be subscribed and have your bell notification button pushed when those videos come out. Be prepared to leave a comment as we go. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay. The true dates for the Feast of Dedication and Prophetic Background. On December 2nd, 2024, we observe the new moon. But what does this mean for the Feast of Dedication, known to many as Hanukkah? This feast, celebrated by Jews around the world, commemorates the rededication of the Second Temple in Jerusalem. Yet, the true dates for this significant feast are tied not only to historical events, but also to prophetic fulfillment and sacred writings found in the Apocrypha. So kicking off here, we're looking at the exact date for the Feast of Hanukkah, the celebration of dedication in the year of 2024. And so what we see is that we actually did observe the moon on December the 2nd. We weren't the only ones. We did here at the Hillary Homestead, but there was others that reported out around the world who saw the sliver of the new moon to appear on December the, the 2nd. So from there, we understand from the scripture that Hanukkah is actually 25 days later. And that's what it's referring to when it says we get this from sacred writings. So it should be like that um, Enochian calendar telling us how to calculate these days. But let's go on. The Feast of Dedication, or Hanukkah, is celebrated on the 25th day of the Hebrew month of Kislev, which typically falls in late November or early December. Yeah, so that's every year that this falls on the 25th day of the ninth month, Kislev. In 2024, this corresponds to the evening of December 25th, extending to the evening of January 2nd, 2025. Now, we've been talking about this date for a long time. Right. Um, because of how the scripture talks about some prophetic events happening during the most treacherous day of the year. And when we look back at Antiochus Epiphanes, which we'll talk about in this video, we're going to find that his celebration, his um, what he was doing was actually on this same day the 25th of Kislev. And so what we'll find out is that their celebration was first. What Antiochus Epiphanes was doing came first. And then Hanukkah was actually instituted afterwards, actually on the same day, the 25th day of Kislev. And then on certain years, like this year, it actually falls on the exact same day, which is the 25th day of December. That's significant. But let's go on. The festival commemorates the miraculous rededication of the Second Temple in 165 BCE after its desecration by the Seleucid, Seleucid king Antiochus Epiphanes. So you go back to the books of Maccabees and you can read about this story. 
how they had came in and overthrew um, the Israelite community there. And they were not actually allowed to keep tabernacles at all. But then once they got the victory, they celebrated during the festival of Hanukkah. And what we're going to find is that they're very similar. All of that happened back there in 165 BCE. And what's interesting is that you see that that corresponds to a sabbatical year when you're thinking about the current time. But anyway, we, we talk about that in another video. Storm. In the second century BCE, Antiochus IV, who sought to Hellenize the Jewish people and their religion, desecrated the Jewish temple by sacrificing pigs on the altar. This act sparked the Maccabean revolt led by the priestly family of the Hasmoneans. After their victory, they cleansed and rededicated the temple, lighting the menorah with only a small amount of oil, which miraculously lasted eight days, the origin of the eight days of Hanukkah. Um, all right, so there's a lot going on in here. First of all, you have this Antiochus Epiphany doing what? Hellenizing the Jewish people. There was no Jewish people back then, first of all. Like I said, I, I got some help from the computer to write this. But these are the Israelite people that was otherwise keeping the feast days there in Jerusalem. Right. Tabernacles, Passover and such. And then you have this Antiochus Epiphanes who comes in to Hellenize them. In other words, to turn them into heathen. And what does he do in order to turn them into heathen? He comes in and actually sacrifices a pig on his holiday. This was holiday was already going on. This was his, his holiday celebration, his December 25th celebration. He took his regular standard December the 25th celebration and decided to have it on the altar in the temple in Jerusalem. Right. That's what started the revolt. That's what started the war. You had a lot of people who gave up and actually did Hellenize themselves. Some of them even trying to get rid of their circumcision or evidence of the circumcision and actually becoming heathen altogether. Just gave up their whole identity. But there was a few, these Maccabeans, it was a family of, of brothers and a, and, a, and a dad there who actually fought back and was able to um, give some help from the other Israelites to overthrow Antiochus Epiphanes and take back the temple. Right. And that's what this celebration is all about is the rededication of that temple after it was taken away. Right. Now, that relates to current time because that war is still going on. You still have the Hellenization of our father's people through these pagan holidays. Mm. In fact, they're going to celebrate this same pagan holiday with Antiochus Epiphanes, even maybe with a pig, on Kislev 25th in this particular year, 2024. Yeah, a lot of times, you know, we see and, you know, I guess I didn't really put two and two together, but you know how we see the on um, the holiday where we see the pig with the laying on a platter with his the apple stuck in our mouth. Mm. This is just uh, seems to be symbolic of what um, Antiochus did, mm -hmm. and maybe a lot of people did not know that. You know, we often see it in cartoons and things like that, but you know, it's just the symbology of. Um, I guess of what actually happened during um, the days when he dedicated the pig um, at the temple. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you think we're still doing the same thing now? Yep. This event is recorded in the first and second books of Maccabees which are part of the Apocrypha sacred text, not included in the Hebrew Bible, but significant in the context of Jewish and Christian history. Yeah, they, they basically don't want us to have this particular information because how many people making this connection would, would fall for it this, in this time right. would actually go out and have this particular celebration, seeing how much these guys fought against it, some of them even to the death. You know, to resist eating pork at all, especially during their pagan festival. Right. All right, let's go on. 
The first book of Maccabees, particularly in chapter 4, details the victory and the subsequent rededication of the temple. We read, And they celebrated the dedication of the altar for eight days and offered burnt offerings with gladness and sacrifice the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. That's yeah. Maccabees 4 and 59. Yeah, and we need to look closely at that scripture, especially when we start thinking about our eight candle menorah and then lacking that candle for eight days because it didn't quite happen that way. It was, um, I think it covers it in this story. And so we'll, we'll talk about it more, what was actually going on. There's a lot of people that question whether we should be having an eight candle menorah during Hanukkah. But um, like I said, when we get into the books of Maccabees, you'll find out that it was a regular standard seven candle menorah. And what they was using was something like naphtha, um, heavy water, clear liquid, we call it lighter fluid now, but this is a natural um, element, a natural liquid that came out of the ground. They happened to find it. Um, and the way they found it is that the sun caught it on fire. And so they knew it was something interesting when the sun caught it on fire. And so that's what they ended up using to light the menorah was that heavy water. These verses set the foundation for what would become the Feast of Dedication, a time for rejoicing and remembering God's intervention in their darkest hours. Yeah, so after fighting back, but it, it, it he makes it sound like that that's what it was really all about. And Titus came in, put this pig on the altar, and now all of a sudden we celebrate it for all of these many years later. But when we look at the timing of such and how the feast days prophecies line up, we see that Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication, was always our Father's plan. It's just that he was given to us at that particular time. It's a post-exilic feast because it's really pointing to the recovery of the Israelites as we start to work our way towards the new covenant or the new Jerusalem. Right. Same as pure. It's along the same lines is where uh, people are getting their stuff back. Further insights into the celebration comes from 2 Maccabees, particularly in chapter 10, which also recounts the purification and rededication of the temple. It reads, They celebrated the purification of the temple for eight days with joy, as at the Festival of Booths, remembering how not long before, during the Festival of Booths, they had been wandering in the mountains and caves like wild animals. This is found in Second Maccabees 10 and 6. Yeah, and in there we find out that their celebration was very similar to Booths. It, the only difference is instead of their uh, palms being green, as in, you know, in the summer, their palms are dry, as in the end of fall. But it's pretty much the same celebration, and a lot of people will actually have booths up. And we'll have one up, but a lot of people will be sleeping in them, you know, for the entire eight days, even in the wintertime, because it's so similar to the Feast of Tabernacles. And it's important, especially for those who've missed Tabernacles, uh, for any reason, this is actually almost a, a, a way of making up for tabernacles because of what we read here. That's what they were doing. They, they were celebrating Hanukkah in remembrance of tabernacles and celebrating it in the same way. So I believe we could do the similar thing here for those who miss tabernacles could actually make up for it or at least, you know, make a treaty to make up for it by keeping a proper feast of Hanukkah this year and the rest of the time. In these passages, we see that the rededication of the temple occurred at the same time as the Feast of Tabernacles, which was initially missed due to the battle. This overlap overscores the themes of restoration and divine mercy, which are central to the feast. So you have this temple. Of course, it's supposed to be a representation of the spiritual temple, but you have these Hellenistic people who keep destroying this temple. Well, now, once again, it's being dedicated or this time being rededicated, but it's actually a sign of the end times when our temples would be permanently dedicated. 
Interestingly, the Feast of Dedication is also mentioned in the Gospel of John, where we read, Then came the Feast of Dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Yahweh Shawana, the Christ, was in the temple era walking in Solomon's colonnade. So the Messiah kept the festival of dedication. Right. For those questioning whether we're supposed to do it, well, we ask the question, what did the Messiah do? Well, he kept all of the post-exotic festivals. Yahweh Shawana, the Christ, as we see, was present in the temple during this festival, which indicates its significance even in the time of the New Testament. While Hanukkah was not an institution of the Mosaic law, it became a part of Jewish tradition, symbolizing the hope for God's continued favor. And so you have to think that he's in the temple now during Hanukkah. And it should be pointed out that it says that it was winter. Hanukkah actually starts at the end of fall. Mm -hmm. It just spans the new moon there. So one could argue that this is actually the new moon day or close to it mm -hmm. that falls during Hanukkah, the first day of the 10th month. You have the Messiah there walking around in the temple um, during this festival. Right. Now, like I said, but now it would be in the spirit. But what about the role of prophecy in the divine plan in the context of the Feast of Dedication? The apocryphal books provide insight here as well. In the proto-evangelism of James, a text that highlights Mary's early life and her role in the divine story, we see that Mary's own dedication as a child mirrors the rededication of the temple. It was her own consecration that would bring about the miraculous birth of the Savior, the true light that would one day light the world. Yeah, we hear about this celebration, um, especially in the apocryphal books, and it's kind of a common thing because we don't hear much about this celebration in the Bible. Right. Um, which I have to believe leads to its significance. But one thing that I wish I had included in here was the prophecies around Christmas. You know, there's prophecies around Christmas too. Mm -hmm. This is the one that the prophet gave, I think it was Jeremiah gave to the Egyptians, told them about how the Messiah was supposed to return to um, for his people. And that's what caused them to create what we call the nativity scene. That's actually a Egyptian representation of the destruction of the world as prophesied by the prophet Jeremiah to the Egyptians. But anyway, let's go. In a similar way, the infancy gospel of Thomas reflects on the childhood of Yahweh Shawana, the Christ, emphasizing his divine nature and the miraculous act that will come to define his life. The true fulfillment of the temple's rededication. Yeah. So it's just that now this temple is a spiritual temple. You know, it's on our heart temple. And of course, we do a dress rehearsal for it every year. But one year, there's going to be the permanent, like I said, permanent dedication of the temple. And that'll be when we'll be under the new covenant. It is a prophetic picture that through the Messiah, the temple of God would be rededicated, not with physical oil, but with his own sacrifice and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So our bodies are the temple. He's going to be moving into that temple as his abode. And then it will be this dedication ceremony. Prophetically, Hanukkah also represents hope. The hope of restoration and the light that comes after darkness. Just as the Maccabees fought for the physical temple, so too, through the Messiah, believers are called to a greater spiritual rededication. The oil of the menorah, which miraculously lasted eight days, can be seen as a symbol of the light of Christ, eternal, never ending, and uncontainable. So this is the light that's promised. 
the right. spiritual light of the end times. Mm -hmm. And we start to wonder at this point in the video how much of this is actually about or will occur during Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot going on here, especially with the Messiah and us. Your spiritual temple. Is Hanukkah just that significant? I don't know. Let's go on. As we approach the Feast of Dedication this year, we reflect not only on the historical events of the Maccabees, but also on their deeper prophetic significance. The true light of the world has come, and he is the one who purifies and rededicates us to the Father. And so we really need to understand that if we're no questioning Hanukkah and what it's really all about, we have to remember that all of this is about us as the temple. And, and Hanukkah is the Feast of Dedication. Right. Dedication of that temple. Blessed is the one who brings light into the world. All right, y'all. Um, like I said, we wanted this to be the video for the kickoff season. And so there's a lot more that we can cover around this subject as we get prepared. But again, we have until December the 25th. It's a feast that starts during the daylight hours necessarily not necessarily the evening before till then we can start getting prepared for how we will celebrate our festival yeah how we can start um meditating on um how we want to uh, rededicate our temple um clean it up purify it and have it prepared um for the holy spirit so i think it's a great time to take these uh, next couple of weeks to start thinking about how we are going to approach it. Yeah, and you guys, in the meantime, you can look through our catalog of videos about Hanukkah. Um, looking at the old ones, we'll put up some new ones, but you can already get information about how it's about joy. And you can learn about some of the other prophecies. And be sure to leave comments in those videos because we'll be picking on some of that information as we make new videos. Right. With that, we're going to say Shalom. Shalom. See y'all in the next video.